I gotta read this book, I gotta study for this exam, and you push through, and you push through, and you take the exam, and you finish the deadline, and sometimes when you're done, whether you get a good grade or not, or whether you're happy with the outcome or not, sometimes you are drained, and that's not what you want, because then, the next deadline that comes, the next paper that comes, I see y'all reading, the next, the next thing that comes, you're just like, oh, you're tired. And that triples, and that's gonna happen in your sophomore year, and that's gonna happen in your junior year. And by the time senior year comes, if you look at, and I want you guys to try this, every year, I know in college you don't have class pictures, take a picture of yourself at the beginning of the year, take a picture of yourself at the end. And you're gonna see a major difference. Like, people that I started college with, you're laughing, it's true. It's so true. <laughs> people who I started college with, by the time we graduated, had gray hair, thin skin, wrinkles, like, it was serious. And, and, and it was not only because of stress, but was because of the things that they were doing to manage their stress. So drinking, and drugs, and even sex, um, just drains you physically. You have to, you know, treat your body like the temple that it is. So if you're, you know, overworking it throughout the day, and on the weekends, releasing that stress in unhealthy ways, you're only, you know, ruining your temple. So there was a moment not a moment, many years of my life, actually most of my life, where I didn't really know who I was. Um, and now, today, as a wellness blogger, I feel like you can't be well unless you know who you are. Um, so it took a lot of uh, terrible experiences, a lot of experiences where that made me question, all right, well, who am I um, in regards to where my parents came from, in regards to where I've been, in regards to where I'm going, and how can I piece that all together? Uh, and how can I, you know, carry this torch for women who are still, you know, finding out like, where they identify and trying to navigate, you know, well, can I identify with Afro-Latina? Because I still today, 29-year-old mother, wife, blogger, still don't know if I can. But I can say for sure that I am an Afro-Descendiente. And, you know, my mother was a Yoruba dancer in Cuba. And my father still to this day is a, a son of one of seven and who has black brothers and sisters who deny their blackness, and that's my truth. When you make the decision, you're telling God that you made the decision. So God is like, I, I see you. Are you gonna walk though? Are you gonna talk the talk though? Are you gonna walk where I tell you to walk? Are you gonna do the things that you're supposed to be doing with all these crystals and sage? And all? you don't need none of that shit. Mm -hmm. But are you, what are you gonna do with it? And it wasn't until that day that I made the decision that I kept that intention in my heart, and I still have never left that, that I made a decision to move and walk and be this person and to be in constant prayer. And I think that's what's most important is that we're so used to praying when we need something, yep. yeah. right? Yeah. Oh God, please help me on this test or help me find a parking space. <laughs> like how disrespectful is that, right? <laughs> when I started to walk in prayer, and those of you who have been to my events know these little stories, these little anecdotes of like when I walk, I make pretend I'm stomping on fear and stomping on all these negative based thinking. And when I go to the bathroom and I pee, I'm making pretend that I'm flushing out the negative energy out of myself. That, that's the moment. Everybody needs that moment. And I'm not saying that it needs to come from something bad. You don't have to be, you might be having a wonderful life and still feel disconnected. Yep. Mine, my, my disconnect to spirit uh, manifested physically through anxiety and depression, that was my trigger. And I still deal with it daily, I'm not telling you I don't. I have severe anxiety and you guys would never know. But now that I'm connected, I know that I battle this daily so that I can help others who battle with it daily. Um, I'm able to still be human. I'm never gonna now be a humble person because I know my anxiety will be like, ha ha, <laughs> yeah, <all> right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's that decision that you make to reconnect yourself. We live in a very separate, separate environment. We are not separate from, I'm not separate from these women, I'm not separate from you. Yes, we're meeting for the first time, but we are all connected. Yep. I'm deeply humbled and honored to stand here beside so many powerful women um, in this room for the burning souls, two of which are my husband and my daughter over there. Um, I started blogging when blogging was cool. Nobody knew what a blog was, nobody wanted to follow me, nobody wanted to read my stuff. But I wrote and I shared things that I loved, and I shared things that I didn't love. I shared mental illness, uh, heartbreak, oppression, fear. Five years into corporate communications jobs later, I'm proud to say that I make a living doing something that many of us have in common, 
being exactly who I needed when I was younger. Uh, lost, confused little girl from outside Manhattan. Specifically, today I have the honor of empowering women of color to break barriers on their journey, to guide them through their darkness to find their light, and redefine wellness in the age of flat tummy tea and love and light. In 2019, my hope is that content creators and change makers like us continue to blast love and most importantly honesty into the wellness world. The internet needs less the pretty curation and colors and sparkles and more vulnerability, especially during vulnerable times like this. And for women as a whole, my hope is that we continue to ascend higher and higher, that we pop the mani petty self-care bubble and that we care for ourselves through sisterhood, through forgiveness, therapy, and not being sorry about setting boundaries. And most importantly, that we love ourselves deeply as we collectively remember who the hell we are. Goddesses, unapologetic about our shine, while our 